Think of a premium badged compact SUV, and you probably think of something German, or maybe a Range Rover Evoque. We'd also suggest, though, that you should be looking at the car we're going to test here, Volvo's XC60. In its most affordable form, it's got a class-leading diesel engine that looks good on the balance sheet, while smarter looks and clever infotainment technology also add to its appeal. Think you know this car, Volvo's XC60? Think again. Yes, it's still a premium badged compact SUV that competes with cars like Audi's Q5 and BMW's X3. Yes, it's still super safe and solidly built. Yes, you can still get it with the old Ford-derived 2.4-litre diesel engines. Beyond this point, though, this car can now offer quite a different proposition. Yes, it's more smartly styled these days, particularly at the front, where there's a much sleeker look. But the important stuff lies here, beneath the bonnet. The two-wheel drive entry-level D4 diesel model that almost all buyers choose now offers what, for the time being, is the most sophisticated and efficient engine in its segment. It's a two-litre unit, Volvo's own, powered by what the brand calls Drive E technology, which delivers the unlikely sounding combination of an eight-second 0-62 mile an hour capability and 62.8 miles to the gallon combined cycle fuel economy. There's nothing in the class that can match that. Add in a smarter cabin with extra equipment and the latest census infotainment gadgetry, and you've a thoroughly rejuvenated product with all the tools to seriously worry its premium segment competitors. Let's try it. Now, if you were to place driving dynamics as a priority in your premium badged compact SUV, then this Volvo probably wouldn't be the first car you'd turn to. But get behind the wheel, and provided you don't come to a car of this kind wanting to hurl it from bend to bend, and this one still does have plenty to offer. Some care is needed with the specification though. Let me explain. The car I have here is fitted with a stiff R-design lowered sport chassis in an attempt to imbue the handling with a little extra bite. Many buyers though will simply want to prioritize the kind of comfortable ride that will be of much more use on these school runs, shopping trips and urban jaunts of everyday life. For me, a better option then is to get a more standard version, add these sporty visual bits if you want, uh, but then spend a little more to replace the standard dynamic chassis with the optional 4C setup, the term standing for continuously controlled chassis concept. Here you'll be able to alter the suspension to suit the road that you're on and the mood that you're in. Pillowy comfort for the school run and a sharper feel for the back doubles uh, you take to the office after you've dropped the kids off. Everybody wins. An automatic gearbox suits this car too, though the kind you get will depend very much on the engine you choose. The under the bonnet stuff is the major thing that you need to know about this improved XC60. Namely, that two-wheel drive versions get Volvo's sophisticated new 181 brake horsepower Drive E, two-litre, four-cylinder, 16-valve diesel engine with its class-leading performance and efficiency combination, and the option of an equally sophisticated eight-speed automatic transmission. The car is badged D4, and you should ask for it by name. Though make sure when doing so that you understand you'll only be getting it in this form with two-wheel drive. That's because, unfortunately, the Swedes haven't yet got around to mating this power plant with an all-wheel drive chassis. So for the moment, XC60 buyers wanting 4x4 traction must have their cars with the older Ford-derived 2.4-litre five-cylinder diesel unit still plumbed in up front and optionally mated, as before, to an older-style six-speed Geartronic automatic gearbox. Here again, this Volvo wears a D4 badge, so the potential for confusion amongst buyers is obvious. Now, I can see why customers might go for the older engine. After all, it's been uprated to 181 brake horsepower to match the output of the two-wheel drive model, and its efficiency has been tweaked to keep pace with rivals. It's also understandable to conclude that there's not much point in buying a car of this kind if it isn't gonna have the all-wheel drive traction 
to help you when the weather turns icy. And you might be considering that this old 2.4 can also be ordered with 215 brake horsepower to create the all-wheel drive D5 variant that I'm trying here. Now, all of which is true, but I can't help thinking that to choose an XC60 without the latest Drive-E 2.0-litre 16-valve diesel is to miss out on much of what this car has to offer. With the newer engine, this car costs significantly less, yet can match the performance of the thirstier D5 power plant. Rest to 60, two miles an hour in eight seconds en route to 130 miles an hour, while delivering running cost returns that are vastly better and offering the option of a much cleverer auto gearbox. As for 4x4 traction, well, a decent set of winter tires will give you most of what you'll need there. Now, that won't suit if you regularly go off-road, of course, but then this car isn't designed to regularly go off-road. Not that you would know that from the pages devoted to its supposed mud-plugging prowess in the instruction manual. This reminds you that its 230 mm ground clearance is superior to that of the larger XC90, that there's a 22 degree gradient approach angle, plus hill descent control to get you safely down the other side, and that the car's wading depth is 350 millimeters. Torque on all-wheel drive variants is automatically distributed between all four wheels by an intelligent traction 4x4 system, which is certainly useful on those muddy fields and forest tracks the road-going tyres will allow you to cross, but has really been developed with traction on wet tarmac in mind. So yes, road-going ease of use is really what this car is all about. There's roll stability control, which you might need if you're one of the very few opting for the flagship 304 brake horsepower T6 3 litre turbo petrol model and a clever TSA stability system to keep trailers on the st straight and narrow. All the diesels on offer are decently quiet too, refined enough in fact at speed to make you notice that levels of wind noise are better than you'll find in some German rivals, especially BMW's X3. Around town, the steering is a little heavier than I would like, and the turning circle a touch restricted, but at speed, the setup's fine. Overall then, a good showing. You might be surprised by this car. Can we really class a car weighing the best part of two tons and measuring over 4.6 metres in length as a compact 4x4? British designer Steve Mattin says we can. The suspension of disbelief is made easier by the way the XC60's exterior styling disguises its bulk. Imagine a larger first generation XC90 model that's been on a hot wash cycle for a couple of hours and that's what the XC60 resembles, shrunken slightly. A little chamfered in its edging, but recognisably a Volvo product, and one that the company claim has turned up the visual volume, especially in this smart and revised form. The most recent changes include a redesigned front end featuring a re-sculpted bonnet, sleeker headlamps and horizontal lines on the grille, which along with a bigger Volvo badge features chrome bars to emphasise the car's width. It's all been about creating a more upmarket, cohesive look. A lot of that's down to the detailed tweaks, the emphasis away from black trim and onto colour coordination, the relocation of the washer nozzles out of sight under the bonnet, the flush headlamp washer jets. Under the skin, the whole thing's based on an originally Ford-derived chassis, the so-called EUCD platform. For this, Volvo's design dates back to the period when this Swedish brand was under blue oval ownership. From the same apparently humble underpinnings have sprung some great cars, this XC60 taking its place alongside products as diverse as the Land Rover Freelander, Ford's Galaxy, Mondeo and S-Max and Volvo's own V70. At the wheel, the changes aren't quite as obvious, but the overall ambience is certainly a stage or two up market from what it was before. There are now better quality inlays around the centre console, a plusher headlining, smart textile covered B pillars, and some very well finished silk metal frames around the air vents and the light controls. When you're trying to sell against cars like Audi's Q5, this sort of thing has plenty of showroom importance. 
Ahead of you, through the chunky uh, three-spoke wheel, lie some smartly finished instruments with new graphics, and there's the usual infotainment screen in the center of the dash, though it is a little small unless you upgrade to the satellite navigation setup that I have here. The rear seats remain a little higher than the front pair uh, to give better visibility for children, and the two outer seats in the back can be specified with two-stage booster cushions. There's certainly a very airy feeling here, particularly if you specify the kind of serious glazing overhead I have here, courtesy of this optional laminated glass panorama roof. Unlike other similar roofs on other cars, it doesn't rob you of too much headroom, and a couple of six-footers would be comfortable here over a long trip. You'd struggle to fit three of them in though, but a trio of kids will be quite happy. Out back, raise the power-operated tailgate, and you'll find that the load opening is arguably the widest amongst the XC60's direct competition, with a 495 litre capacity that's slightly more than a Mercedes GLA, but slightly less than a BMW X3 or an Audi Q5. Under the boot floor, there's a secure storage area that can't be opened without the tailgate being lifted, making it a great place to keep valuables uh, safe while the car's parked. Now, as with big Volvo estates, the rear seat is a three-piece affair that folds 40, 20, 40, and folds down completely flat to reveal 1,455 litres of total fresh air. Expect to pay somewhere in the 30 to 45,000 pound bracket for your XC60. That's the theory. In practice, most sales are made in the 30 to 35,000 pound bracket and are focused on the D4 models that almost all buyers choose. Bear in mind that of these, it's only the two-wheel drive variants that get Volvo's far more sophisticated drive E 2-litre, 16-valve, four-cylinder, 181 brake horsepower diesel engine. It's by far the best, most efficient, and most sophisticated power plant in the range, and comes with the 1,500 pound option of an equally clever eight-speed automatic transmission. Pretty much the only reason I can think of for not choosing it would be if you had to have all-wheel drive. If that's the case, you can still choose an XC60 with a D4 badge, but to cope with power going to all four wheels, it'll have to be one propelled by Volvo's older, Ford-derived 2.4-litre five-cylinder unit, also now upgraded to 181 brake horsepower to create parity with the two-wheel drive model. This sells for an £1,800 premium over the two-wheel drive variant, and here again there's the £1,500 option of automatic transmission, though in this case we're talking an older, less efficient six-speed gearbox. If you want more power, then the same 2.4 litre engine has been upgraded to 215 brake horsepower to create the D5 model, which comes only with all-wheel drive, but still can't out-sprint a lower-powered two-wheel drive D4 model equipped with the more modern Drive E unit. That's the power of new technology for you. If you do want a D5, you're looking at a £2,000 premium over a comparable all-wheel drive D4. A minority choice then but it won't be quite such a rare sight on British roads as the only petrol XC60 model, the 304 brake horsepower T6 variant, which comes only with automatic transmission and all-wheel drive, and a price tag that'll relieve you of the best part of £45,000. And the competition? Well, this Volvo competes at the premium end of the compact SUV sector, where it faces four key rivals, Audi's Q5, BMW's X3, Mercedes GLA class, and the Range Rover Evoque. None of these three can offer an entry-level two-wheel drive diesel model with the power and economy to properly compete with a 181 brake horsepower two-wheel drive XC60 D4. It rules the premium compact SUV diesel niche if you don't want two-wheel drive. Why? Well, you won't pay much less for, say, an X3 S-Drive 18D or an Evoque ED4, and in each case you're looking at a car with much higher running costs and 30 to 40 brake horsepower less, so significantly less performance. Audi's Q5 doesn't come with two-wheel drive. But let's say you want a car of this kind with four-wheel drive. Here, of course, the XC60 has a much tougher task, given that its all-wheel driven models must continue to campaign with the much older Ford-derived five-cylinder 2.4-litre diesel. 
Even here though, it puts up a decent showing. The £33,000 asking figure is a fraction more than you'd pay for a rival Range Rover Evoque SD4, Mercedes GLA 220 CDI 4MATIC or BMW X3 xDrive 20D. And pretty much the same as the money being asked for an Audi Q5 2 litre TDI Quattro. Of these four rivals though, only the most recently launched, the Mercedes, can get close to the all-wheel drive D4 XC60 in terms of fuel and CO2 returns. And I wasn't expecting that. Other XC60 models don't really have direct competition. The 215 brake horsepower D5 variant isn't quite fast enough to compete with six-cylinder X3 and Q5 rivals, but it offers a useful £3,000 price saving over both of them, which leaves only the petrol XC60 offering the all-wheel drive T6 variant. There's no petrol rival in this segment with an output to match the 304 brake horsepower on offer here though the Range Rover Evoque SI4 with 240 PS is still able to match the T6's performance. As I said at the beginning though, almost all XC60 buyers end up choosing a diesel D4 model and probably a two-wheel drive version with the superbly efficient drive E engine. You can see why. If that's the kind of decision you're minded to make, having been through the comparison process, you'll want to know what you can expect to find fitted as standard equipment. A reasonable amount actually. Um, all variants get daytime running lights, alloy wheels of at least 17 inch in size, roof rails, rear parking sensors, um, a power operated tailgate, auto folding powered door mirrors with ground lights, a rear spoiler, electronic climate control, Bluetooth phone compatibility, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and a high performance audio system with DAB radio, a USB input and eight speakers. You also get cruise control, a trip computer, a leather covered steering wheel and gear knob, plus Sensus, Volvo's high tech driver control interface. With a built in screen angled towards the driver and an intuitive scroll selector right on the steering wheel, it allows you instantly and safely to explore all your multimedia, audio, communication and vehicle settings. If you've ordered your XC60 with satellite navigation, then you'll be able to upgrade your sensor system to the even more advanced Sensus Connect setup. This will entitle you to an even bigger infotainment display, seven inch instead of five inch, a state-of-the-art infrared beam scan touchscreen that can be used even when wearing gloves. That's a world first in cars and handy in winter. Uh, connection is made either via a car mounted 3G or 4G dongle or the driver's mobile phone. Plus there's one of the best optional stereo installations available on a car of this kind. The premium sound system features 12 Dynaudio speakers and a Dolby ProLogic 2 surround amplifier delivering 650 watts. An optional digital subwoofer under the floor bolsters that with an additional 260 watts. Other popular extras include a large panoramic sunroof, while if you want a sportier feel for your XC60, then you'll want an R design model like the one that I have here. This includes larger 16 inch alloy wheels, a sports pedal set, specially stitched and embossed leather faced sports seats, leather for the gear knob and the three spoke wheel and stiffer sports suspension. Want to go a stage further and create a wolf in wolf's clothing? Well, if you've chosen either a diesel D5 or a petrol T6 model, then you can by opting for the Polestar Performance Pack, which gives you a lovely set of 20 inch wheels and an engine upgrade. With the D5, this gives you another 15 brake horsepower to boost output to 230 brake horsepower. With the T6, output goes up by 25 brake horsepower to 329 brake horsepower. And with that kind of grunt, I'd advise you to consider the 4C adaptive suspension system so that you can sharpen the ride for those times when you really want to make the most of that extra performance. And safety? Well, as you'd expect, that's well covered. Headlining the standard features is the impressive city safety system. This is Volvo's technology for avoiding low speed collisions in city traffic and tailbacks. If you're about to drive into the vehicle in front and the electronic sense that you're not going to react, the car will brake itself. 
Volvo was the first manufacturer in the world to offer this type of setup as standard. There's plenty of other electronic assistants too. Corner traction control is now standard, a torque vectoring system which works through the turns to counter both understeer and wheel spin by lightly micro braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. As a result, the car's kept planted through the tightest corner and you're fired on from bend to bend. Through those corners, uh, you won't be pitching all over the place, fulfilling the literal Latin translation of the word Volvo, I roll. This one won't. Thanks to RSC Roll Stability Control and ROPS, the, roll, the Rollover Protection System. There's also DSTC, Dynamic Stability and Traction Control, and on all-wheel drive models, Hill Descent Control to ease you down steep slopes. More conventional safety kit includes twin front, side and curtain airbags that work with Volvo's SIPS side impact protection system plus Isofix child seat fastenings. If you want to go further then there's the option of a driver support pack including a whole raft of electronic cleverness. Collision warning with full auto brake scans the road ahead for potential accidents at higher speeds while pedestrian and cyclist protection specifically targets people and bikers. ACC Adaptive Cruise Control and Distance Alert uses a radar to keep you a safe distance from the car ahead on the highway, while on automatic models there's also a cue assist feature that senses a uh, highway tailback and can automatically take you right back to a standstill and off again without leaving cruise control. The BLIS blind spot information system with cross traffic alert will stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another car. There's a lane keeping aid to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway and DAC driver alert control will monitor your driving reactions during a journey and suggest a stop for a restorative coffee if the electronics sense that you're getting drowsy. Finally, there's a roadside information display that uh, displays speed limit and road warning signs on the dash as you pass them. And high beam assist that'll automatically dip your high beam for you at night in the face of oncoming traffic. With that little lot fitted, you'll be doing very well indeed to have an accident in this car. If the running costs associated with this class of car tend to put you off buying one, then here's where this XC60 has the potential to really surprise you. What if I were to tell you that the fuel and CO2 costs of running one of these were less than the cheapest 1.25 litre Ford Fiesta Super Mini? Well, that's just what I'm gonna tell you. Fitted with Volvo's latest generation drive-e 2.0-litre diesel engine, the two-wheel drive XC60 D4 delivers 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and an impressive 117 grams per kilometre of CO2. No other compact SUV can get anywhere near that, even models like BMW's X3 S-Drive 18D and the Range Rover Evoque ED4 that offer much less power around 150 brake horsepower rather than a two-wheel drive XC60 D4 models 181 brake horsepower. So how has Volvo done it? Well as you would expect there's fuel saving electric power steering and a stop start system to cut the engine when you don't need it stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights but the technology goes a lot deeper than that. Now, I won't go into all the technicalities, but the savings have been achieved through things like uh, the reduction of inner friction in the engine, uh, more precise fuel injection, smart heat management in the power plant, advanced combustion control, and the use of a special fuel pump. Competitors really need to take one of these drivey engines apart and see how it's all been done. Your running cost returns aren't even very significantly affected if as I probably would, you specify your two-wheel drive XC60 D4 with Volvo's high-tech eight-speed automatic gearbox. Expect 60.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 124 grams per kilometer of CO2. 
Now, that's because this auto transmission has a clever Eco Plus feature that when activated, softens throttle response, tweaks the climate control and the turbo cut-in point, changes the gear shift pattern and adds an Eco Coast function that deactivates engine braking when cruising. If you want all-wheel drive traction with your XC60 and therefore have to have the older 2.4 litre diesel under the bonnet, you've inevitably got to accept that it will cost you more. Though the returns actually aren't better than I was expecting given the age of this engine. Both D4 and D5 all-wheel drive manual models will return 53.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and uh, 139 grams per kilometre of CO2, which is actually very good by class standards. A comparable BMW X3 xDrive 20D, for example, manages 50.4 miles to the gallon and 149 grams per kilometre, while a rival Audi Q5 2.0-litre TDI 177PS Quattro delivers just 47.9 miles to the gallon and 154 grams per kilometre. Bear in mind, though, that if you opt for your diesel all-wheel drive XC60 with Volvo's older six-speed Geartronic automatic gearbox, the returns take quite a beating, dropping to 44.1 miles to the gallon and 169 grams per kilometre. In the unlikely event that you're considering the sole petrol XC60 model, the 304 brake horsepower T6 auto all-wheel drive variant, I'll tell you that the returns will be disappointing just 26.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and a smoky 249 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's pretty much identical to 420 brake horsepower's worth of Porsche's much larger KN GTS SUV. But let's get back to the front-driven D4 diesel models that most potential XC60 buyers will be looking at and talk taxation. Let's say uh, you were looking at, for example, a rival Land Rover Freelander ED4 two-wheel drive model and bought this Volvo instead. Well, you'd not only be getting yourself a much faster and arguably more stylish car, but you'd also save yourself over £80 a month at nearly £1,000 a year in benefit in kind monthly taxation payments if you were a 40% taxpayer. Well worth taking into account. It all has a big impact on overall running cost figures, the official ones encompassing those all-important residual values. Now, the XC60 has always done extremely well here, with the entry-level car scoring a creditable 72.4 pence per mile over three years and 36,000 miles. By contrast, the entry-level version of the BMW X3 will run you 75 pence per mile. And that only leaves insurance groupings that range between 28 and 30 for the D4 models and rise to 32 for the D5 variant that I'm driving here. When a car gets heavily revised six years into its model life, it's normally a last ditch attempt to keep it fresh and resist the inevitable sales slide into old age. But this feels different. This improved XC60 is in almost every respect a thoroughly revitalized car with its sleeker looks, its cutting edge infotainment gadgetry, and most of all, its sophisticated drivey diesel engine. And very much a worthy competitor for rivals of the caliber of Audi's Q5, BMW's X3, and the Range Rover Evoque. It could be even better, of course, if Volvo had got around to fitting its new power plant into an all-wheel drive chassis. The fact that for 4x4 traction, you have to have the old 2.4-litre five-cylinder diesel engine that's been fitted to this car ever since its launch in 2008 is certainly a drawback. But even this unit is still more than a match for its rivals in terms of economy and cleanliness, which gives you some idea of exactly how far they are behind the astonishing standards set in this respect by Gothenburg's newer drive-e technology. Just try and find another car of this kind able to make rest to 62 miles an hour in eight seconds dead, yet still potentially deliver as much as 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Good luck with that one. Yes, it's true that there are sharper contenders in this segment to drive and that this Volvo won't suit if you're going to be regularly venturing off the beaten track. But neither of these issues will bother many potential buyers, people 
more likely to value the cruising comfort, solid build quality and standard setting safety that this car offers. My advice would be to get yourself a two wheel drive D4 diesel model with the clever engine, equip yourself with a set of winter tires that'll be all you need in a cold snap and smile smugly every time you see a Q5, an X3 or an Evoque drive past. In this form, this XC60 is probably the best kept secret in this segment. Probably best to keep it to yourself.